So today is day one of this video. I plan to do a time span thing. I don't know how long I'm gonna be filming this video for, but we're starting it off today. As you can tell from the title, I am going to be propagating some of my rare plants that are not doing well. I'm just going to be completely starting them over, chopping them into wet sticks and seeing if I can kind of grow them back into a starter plant <clears throat> that I can care for better and mature. These have all gone downhill for their own reasons and I will get into each of those. Um, I guess I'll do that right now. I'm just gonna introduce you to the three plants that we're gonna be working with throughout this video. So the first one is my Philodendron Florida Beauty. This plant I am quite sad about, honestly. I got this Florida Beauty as a cutting a few years ago now and it grew so well for me. I loved it. I was over the moon uh, about the fact that I had a Florida Beauty because these were so hard to get, so expensive. They're still pricey, but not nothing like what it was back, you know, two or three years ago. Anyways, I had a great time growing it. The variegation was stunning. I don't know what went wrong, what happened, but eventually this plant started only giving me variegated leaves. Like it just gives me these solid, lighter colored leaves, which eventually just die off. Yeah, I used to have gorgeous leaves. They all just look like crap now. Um, and they only give me yellow. I've chopped this up once already, put, I think I have three different vines in here and all three of the vines only give me this yellow growth. So I don't know like what the heck, I've tried having it under different conditions, nothing has really seemed to help. So in a last ditch attempt to bring variegation back on this plant, or like I guess bring some green back on this plant, I'm going to be completely chopping it up. We'll see if any of the nodes end up growing and giving me a variegated leaf. I would be so happy if, um, if it did. She's just been having a rough time and it has just not been fun to watch her go from being a beautiful plant that gave me so much joy to being something that is just like kind of sad and um, that I haven't really been able to like do anything to improve the situation. That is plant number one, mission, bring back some nice coloring. Um, we will see how that goes. Plant number two is my Monstera Obliqua. Um, I've had this for about a year and a half now, I believe, and I loved it. It was growing so well for me. This is another one where I'm just like, what the heck happened? Like it was doing so well. Um, I have a couple theories of what happened. As you can see, it does still have some leaves that look okay. Like this leaf looks pretty nice, honestly. Um, but most of the leaves, especially on this side, there's a couple different vines here. So the ones on this side, have pretty much completely crisped up. Well, not completely, but um, there's a lot of crisping on them. Some of them have completely crisped up and I've removed those ones. But uh, yeah, it just looks very rough. Like, look at this leaf. It looks so bad, I have no idea. There's been a couple things that have kind of gone on with this plant. Um, there's been flat mites and spider mites in the cabinet where it's living. Same with the Florida Beauty. The Florida Beauty actually lives right beside the Monstera Obliqua. So I don't know if that has anything to do with both of them not growing well, but yeah, there's been pest issues. Um, there's definitely been underwatering issues as well. And yeah, it just hasn't been happy. It's shot out this big runner like it is so long you guys oh my goodness um so i'm gonna be cutting that up as well finally i've been meaning to chop these plants up for so long now so i'm so glad that we're starting this project today so this one is mission just grow back a healthy plant um i don't want any crisping or anything like that i just want like a nice healthy plant because these are so beautiful when they're like you know big and lush and healthy so that's gonna be my plan for this one i'll probably want eventually to grow like a few of them in a pot so it can kind of be like full. And then the last one is my variegated Monstera Adansoniae, which looks so sad. And it's another one that just like, oh, it makes me so frustrated because I see other people growing variegated Monstera Adansoniae and they're so beautiful and lush and the leaves are big and gorgeous. And mine, I think that part of the problem is that it has so much white. Like it's very white dominant. Um, like there is 
some green but it does also give out fully white leaves and those ones have just died off um, I've lost a lot of leaves on this and part of, it's partly been due to my underwatering but I think it's also just I don't know I've just had a tough time with this plant and I really want to start over so yeah again I'm going to be completely chopping this up I'm not sure if I'm gonna leave the any leaves on or if I'm just gonna do leafless nodes like wet stick propagation I might I don't know I'll have to decide but um yeah I'm just hoping to bring back a little bit more green so if I you know propagate multiple nodes hopefully one of them will or a couple of them will give me the variegation that I'm looking for and will just grow nicely and be happy for me if not I think that this is a plant that I probably would um, replace one day because I do really like them Monstera adansonii is one of my favorite plants just like the regular green version so of course I love the variegated version I know people think that these are overhyped right now, but I honestly think that they're so beautiful. So um, I'm just crossing my fingers that I'm gonna be able to grow it back nicely. Okay, I'm just gonna get my little area ready and then we will start chopping. All right, I'm gonna start off with my variegated Adansonii. So I'm just gonna take the tape off. And I'm just gonna pull it out. Oh, oh my gosh, the roots literally are like completely dried up. <laughs> that could be part of my problem. Oh my gosh. There's like a couple that look like they might be healthy, but oh my gosh. Okay, well good thing I'm chopping this up. <laughs> Yikes. So I'm just gonna pull it off of this bowl. There is a root in there, but, oh, it feels like it might actually. Oh, it was going down to the, there was an aerial root going down into the soil. This root right here was rooted into the moss pole and then grew down into the soil. That's pretty cool. It actually looks like it might be healthy or most of it might be healthy too. I'll probably cut it off and just start over, but it is cool to see. Okay, I'm just gonna cut all the roots off, honestly. Got my little, I've got a couple of different shears actually. I really like these ones for doing like small, um, actually I might use those right now. And I know that these ones are clean too. These are good for small things. They're really sharp. They're meant for like herbs. So I'm just gonna cut off the roots. Okay, I can kind of see where some like growth points are gonna come from. I We have these four leaves, which like I said, I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep on. Maybe I'll just cut like right here and then I can decide about that, I guess. I mean, I could try to root it just like this. Maybe I would take like the lower leaves off. And then for this part, they're very small, but I'm just gonna cut between all of the nodes. Sorry, I got nervous it was gonna fly away. I honestly don't know if these are gonna be successful. There's, I, I think that there's more green the lower we go, which is good. I'm gonna do a couple that have like two nodes just to give us a better chance to that one. Yeah, like this top one is basically all white. So I don't feel very confident about that, but these lower ones, look a little bit better. I'm just gonna do like a larger chunk since I really want those ones to root. 
And then I can see more growth points. I'm just gonna do one right here. Ooh, oh my gosh, they're really flying everywhere here. And I think I'll just, I think I'll just leave this as one, I guess. I can't really see well. I don't know if that's gonna root anyways. I'm just gonna leave that as one chunk. And then this, I'm gonna go ahead and peel these leaves off. I don't really like these leaves anyways, honestly, the crispy ones. One more. There is some green in this part of the stem. Okay, I'm gonna try to cut a piece off. There's a little node at the bottom part here. Don't know if you'll be able to see, but I'm just gonna cut. I'm just gonna do it. Whoop. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that is completely chopped up. Let me show you what we're working with. So as for the wet sticks, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, varying in size. If these tiny ones root, I will be shocked, honestly. <laughs> Um, I'm just kind of curious to see if they would, so that's why I cut those risky little bits because obviously we have several to work with. Um, and then we have our little top cut, which I'll probably just propagate in water. I decided to leave these two leaves on, so that will just be a cutting of its own. I like to just wash the dirt off, so I'm just gonna take these to the sink and wash them. Um, maybe use like a little bit of dish soap. Okay, so I'm gonna be using this fancy propagation box, also known as an upcycled spinach container. I just took the label off of the front and I'm going to be using perlite to uh, propagate these plants. So I have my uh, reused perlite here beside me. It has some Lekka bits in there too. I'm just gonna like try to avoid those though. Okay, now I'm just gonna be filling this up a little bit with uh, some Super Thrive water to help with rooting. So I'm just gonna wet it and then I'll check how full it is. So what I wanna see is a small layer of water on the bottom. I think I still need some more. I have a whole video where I talk more in depth about perlite propagation and making perlite propagation boxes if you are interested. I think it's a really great way to root plants, which is why I'm using it today because any plant that I'm like more worried about or really want to like, I don't, I, I don't want to F up the propagation, I will go with a perlite propagation box. Okay, I think that's good. I can see like a little bit of water on the bottom. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but the perlite will wick the water up to the surface where our plants are gonna be hanging out. Perlite works so well because it's really airy, but it also holds water. So all of the roots are gonna get water and they're gonna get oxygen and everything. Um, so I'm just gonna lay down my wet sticks in here. I try to put the growth point facing up if I can see one, but it's not a big deal because they'll usually just root and then you can turn them however you want them um, in the future. I'm trying to keep these ones all pretty close together um, so that I know that these are all variegated adansonii in this section. Okay, so the variegated adansonii are all in there. We have lots of room in here for the other plants. So I'm just gonna set this off to the side and then let's chop up the Florida Beauty next. 
Oh yeah, I forgot about this one. I'm just gonna pop it in a little glass of water. Actually, you know what? I'm probably just gonna throw it in one of the pre-existing containers of water for propagation that I have. I have Monstera adansonii green rooting near my window. So I'm just gonna go pop these in with those guys. There's my regular adansonii propagations and they've already started rooting. They're really happy there. So I'm just going to pop that one in and hopefully we'll get some roots on the variegated one too. All right, Florida beauty. So I... I'm gonna start by pulling her out of the pot. Oh boy. I have no idea what these roots are gonna look like either. Ooh, they actually look pretty good. Like surprisingly good. <laughs> um, oh, and I love this pot so much. At least I can use this pot for another plant now that actually is happy. Anyways, yeah, the roots. They look really good, honestly. Um, so I'm going to, it's kind of rooted. Wait, let me lift you up. It's kind of rooted into the pole at some points, but I'm not gonna be keeping any of these roots. So I'm just gonna kind of tear it off. Not too worried about keeping them intact or anything. I am gonna try to reuse this moss pole though. I don't know if there's a way to get the algae and everything off. Um, I'm gonna see if I can clean it up a little bit though and reuse it. I mean, I can reuse it even with the algae. It would just look nicer if I could get it off. I'm literally just gonna cut the vines, um, cut like the roots off so that I can just, just have the vines. Okay, so I'm going to look at what we are working with here. This vine here, or this stem, has some variegation. I think part of the problem with this plant might be that it was like a half moon variegated plant because I've heard a lot of people say that half moon plants are not, not good because they can do basically what mine is doing. They can decide to just go all variegated or all green. Um, so, I don't know. That's, I've cut it before. I've cut it there before though. So I don't, it looks like that's a spent node now. And then there's just this vine, which I don't really see much variegation on. I mean, I'm gonna cut everything up regardless. There is like some faint striping. Um, I'm gonna cut them all up regardless. And it's just gonna be like luck of the draw um, as to whether any of them actually come out variegated. This is kind of similar. Like this stem has some variegation. This was like my favorite leaf. It was so pretty at one time. Um, and again, I don't really see a ton of variegation on the stem. There's like light variegation. So it's possible that it could come back, but yeah. This is honestly like same story. It's like all the nodes that activated, like they all came from a leaf that had nice variegation. And then it's like the nodes that activated were just at a part that was like just purely variegated. Like, ugh, I don't know. So this I had cut before too. I think there's might be another growth point somewhere on here though, like further down, so we'll find out. Like I said, I had propagated this plant once before. That's why some of these are just like from tiny little stem cuttings. Okay, so let's start. Let's start with the small one, I guess. We'll just get that out of the way. So I'm just gonna cut off where this new growth point is coming from. that down you can see there is like new growth that's gonna be coming out but it again it looks like it's all variegated <laughs> oh man this is the other piece I will just have to kind of trim some of these excess roots off and wash this after I could leave this leaf on like it looks pretty good honestly 
maybe I will leave it on for this one. Okay, set that aside. Next, let's do this one. Again, we have the nice leaf and then looks like it's just reverting to all, um, all light color. Just trying to, there's actually a growth point that's like already activated right there. So I'm going to just cut this off. Now that cutting is just from this leaf. I'm just gonna cut off the roots. I think I'm gonna cut the leaf off of this one because I wanna put this in my perlite box. I wanna snap it off because it'll be cleaner, but yeah, there we go. I'm gonna cut some of it off too. Okay. So that will be one wet stick. I can see a couple of growth points. I could cut this into two. Should I do that? Yeah, I'm gonna cut it into two. Why not? This is an experimental video. Oh, and then we have this portion, which I'm definitely going to cut there. This is the one with the growth point that's coming out. There we go. It's okay, Ollie. Okay, I'm definitely gonna be removing this leaf because it's like so damaged. And I don't know if this is the one that's, a, if this is a spent node or not. It honestly might be. Actually, I think it is. I'm just gonna cut this into a couple pieces. That one is growing. Cut this. Oop. Okay, so our last vine here. I'm just gonna cut some of the roots off again. This looks like a spent node again. Hmm. And also another leaf that needs to come off. Okay, we have a lot of wet sticks now. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven wet sticks from the philodendron florida beauty and then two cuttings that still actually i don't think i'm gonna am i gonna keep this one eh should i i guess i should okay and then two cuttings that i'm just gonna do in water okay so again going into our little propagation box here i'm just going to arrange these in the middle i guess Those are all in there, and now we just have to chop up my Monstera Obliqua. And I'm gonna have so many little, I might actually do the runners in sphagnum moss. That's the only way I've grown runners, and um, I've been successful that way in the past, so I kind of just wanna do that. Okay, I'm just using this takeout container. This is from a Thai place that's nearby, and I always love whenever I order from them because these containers are so awesome. I always keep them either for plant stuff like this or for just like a, an extra container for my food, you know? Works great as just like a little Tupperware. So I'm just going to put some sphagnum. This is pretty dry. I thought that this was moist, but that's okay. I can get it wet too. 
Oh, it's kind of moist underneath, actually. Okay, I'm again taking some of my Super Thrive water and I'm just going to wet this a little bit. That's gonna be too much water, but I'm gonna squeeze it out. Just want it to get absorbed as much as possible first. Okay, I just squeezed the excess out into the sink and now I'm just kind of fluffing it up. I want it to be kind of fluffy and not all just like completely compact. Okay, so I'm just gonna start with the runner on this guy. I'm just gonna, let me see if I can lift you up at all. I'm just going to um, cut it off from the top, I guess. I do have it like pinned down into here, but I don't know if it's actually rooted in. I thought I would try to pin it down and see if it would root in and then shoot off new growth, but it just kept running and no, it has not rooted in. <laughs> oh, that one actually has. Ah, interesting. Okay, well, I'm gonna actually cut it off here then. And I'll pull the rest of it out once we take this off of the pole and everything. But right now I just wanna get most of the runner into this prop box. So I'm just gonna peel off whatever dried bits we have going on. It looked like, it looks like these ones were maybe like trying to root into that moss on the top. Okay, now I'm basically gonna do the same thing that we've been doing. I'm just gonna cut off each, between each little node. Like you can see, there's, um, you can see between most of them where the aerial roots are starting to come out. So it's pretty easy to see where to cut. Kind of curious to experiment leaving like a lot of internode on some of them and then just leaving other ones like small because I've heard that the length of the internode when rooting wet sticks can make a difference but I don't know if that's true or not. I don't really like having a long internode just because it's annoying to like pot up after and stuff. I usually end up cutting it off. Imagine if these all grew and I had this many Monstera obliqua. <laughs> That would be crazy. Okay, again, you know the drill. I'm just gonna lay them down into here. Some of them have like a pretty obvious growth point starting to emerge. I don't know if you can see like that little green, lighter green bit right there. That's where the new growth is gonna come from. So I'm trying to put those bits like facing up. All right, so there's all of our obliqua. Well, not even all of them because there's still a couple little pieces on the moss pole that I'm gonna be cutting off still, but we already have. 18 in here, so that's wild. Um, okay, let's do the rest of the plant now. I'm just going to, what am I gonna do? Okay, let's first unpin it. These pins get like, oh, maybe it's just dirty. I think that they get rusty too though. Now this plant actually is rooted onto the pole. Um, at least one of the vines is. The vine that actually looks okay with these leaves on it. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to pull this out of the pot and cut the plant off again. The roots look pretty good, once again. Like, there's nothing wrong with them. I'm just gonna cut it off from down here again. Oh boy, there we go. 
so I can separate this. Oh, this is actually awesome because now I'll have another one of these North Shore Tropicals poles because I need one to extend my Burrow Marks Variegata. Okay, I'm gonna cut a couple more vines or roots from down here. So this whole section of the plant is not even attached into the pole. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that off right now. Let's cut it right. I'm trying to get like as close as possible here. Cut that. And I should be able to just, oh, it does have, oh. I thought the runner was coming from this smaller plant, but the runner is actually coming off of this main plant. That makes sense since it's like not really growing. Okay, well I'm gonna have to cut the runner then because that's rooted into the pole. Okay, so now this section is free. Like I said, this plant kind of branched into two. Um, so this one is rooted into the pole and so is this part of the runner. So I think I actually wanna deconstruct this pole. You can see what's in there. I can see that there's a lot of roots in here. You can see them going up and down through the moss. Okay, I'm just gonna start removing the moss. Okay, you guys, I've removed most of the moss and the roots inside are actually super healthy. I'll try to show you, these are all roots in here. Um, and look at this. So that uh, part of the runner that rooted from the top, the root goes all the way to the bottom. Like it is so long. Oh my goodness. And it's still healthy. It has a white tip on there. Like that is crazy. So I wonder if I should just pot this runner up once I cut it off and hopefully it will push out new growth. I think I'm gonna. The growth point looks like pretty, pretty good too. Let's do that right now actually. And then I can set him aside. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut. Yeah, I'm just gonna cut literally right there. Now we have that runner with this big long root. Like, okay, I'm gonna take the extra sphagnum off. Yeah, it's even branching out. It's got secondary roots too. It's got a whole little root system on here. All right, very interesting. And then the rest of this, I'm just gonna try to pull through. Yeah, this, these parts of the runner are all rooted too. I think I'm gonna cut, <laughs> look at this. So many roots, like that's crazy. I'm gonna cut these all up and then maybe I'll pot them all together, see if any of them grow. Because yeah, wow, <laughs> those are like ready to go. Okay, um, and as for the rest, I'm just gonna try to remove that as well. There we go, we are free from the pole. I'm making such a mess today. <laughs> This is a messy hobby, isn't it? Honestly, I always have so much cleanup after. Okay, so this is actually the one that I like. Um, the piece of Adinsonii, or Adinsonii. Oh my gosh, Obliqua that I like. I'm gonna cut this leaf off for sure because I can't stand this leaf. I think it's all like mite damaged, I guess. The roots look pretty healthy, honestly. Maybe I could just like cut the tips, or at least the tip of that one. Yeah, the tip of both of them off. But they look not bad. Like, I think I could just pot this up and keep this one. Thinking about it. There's some roots that are like questionable, but I could try it. And if it doesn't live, then I tried. Then I could cut it up into like wet stick situation if it doesn't live. It started to run here. So I'm going to cut that off for sure. Cut that with the rest of them. But these leaves are all pretty good. I think I'm going to be able to pot this up. 
Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Okay, so I'll set that aside. And then this is the other piece. This doesn't have any roots attached. So I'm just gonna be cutting it up. I'm just gonna tear off the leaves that I know I don't like. Oh look, there's like new growth coming from right here. This spine, I'm gonna cut off. And I'm just gonna try to cut the different sections that I want. So the nodes get so tight on this, like further down, I can cut here fine. Oops, I kind of, oh no, it's okay. Okay, so that is one. I don't know if I wanna keep that leaf or not, or just do a wet stick. I think I'm only gonna be able to cut these if I remove the leaves, so I'm just gonna remove them. I don't really want these leaves anyways, honestly. They're damaged and weird. So, there we go. This one. Okay, so now I can see the internodes just a little bit better. I might only want to put this into two pieces. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna do two pieces because it's so small and I have so many, whoops, wet sticks already. I don't really need more. Okay, I only have 11 minutes left on my memory card, so I'm trying to be quick. I didn't think this video was gonna take me this long. I'm gonna have to do a lot of editing, but I'm just, um, I've just put some potting mix in this cup and I'm gonna use that for my little um, what are these called? Runner pieces that are rooted. See if they'll take off in here. I'm just gonna put all of them in this one. I might put a lid on top to keep humidity up too, to promote growth. Wow, we have got a lot of rootage going on here. Just gonna get them all in as best as I can. Okay, so I'll show you where we're at, what I've done, what we're working with. Um, so I've put all the rest of the runners and everything into this Tupperware container. And I think I have a total of 24 runners in here now, 24, 25. So that's a lot. I'm gonna be putting the lid on this. Um, and hopefully some of them will root up for us. I'm so curious to see what's gonna happen. And then we also have our four rooted runners in here. So I'll show you what I did. I just watered this through. Um, so I potted them into this plastic cup. It has holes on the bottom and then I'm just setting it into this bigger one so that I can cover it with this lid just to a humidity boost because I think that's gonna help promote growth. So we've got that. I also have this one cutting with the leaf that I'm gonna try to water propagate. I'm just gonna throw this in with the Adansonii that I have water propagating. So we'll see if anything happens with that. And then we have the one that I potted. So I just potted this into a little plastic container. I'm really curious to see if this is gonna shoot out new growth and grow for me. Like I said, I'm not sure if the roots are in like 100% good condition, but we'll find out. <laughs> So I guess I still have room in here if I decide to chop something up and something else up into wet sticks because we just have our variegated Adansonii on this side and then our, what else did we cut up? Philodendron Florida Beauty in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna go situate these and then I'll show you where I put them. Okay, so we have one obliqua in with the Adansonii cuttings in the water. I put the like potted obliqua plant here on top of the Millsbow cabinet in front of a south facing window. I know that they don't like a lot of light but it's super gloomy right now so I'm not worried if it suddenly gets really hot and sunny out then I can always move it. And then I also have the runners that are rooted in a potting mix sitting right here. And then over here under a grow light I have my Monstera obliqua node runner cuttings. <laughs> We'll see if any of those sprout. And then right up here under my Soltec light, I have the variegated Adansonii and Florida Beauty cuttings. I really wanted to put these here because I just, I feel like this light is really going to boost their growth and give them the best shot. So that's it for today. I will check in with you guys when I see something happening. Hello everybody. I'm just popping in with an update on the cuttings that we took. I just looked at a calendar and I can't believe it, but it's almost been four weeks since we took all of those cuttings. So I'm gonna go grab all of the little prop boxes down and everything and we're gonna take a look and see if anything's growing. 
Okay, so you can see that it's still clearly holding a lot of moisture. There's a lot of condensation and everything. I don't typically have to refill prop boxes like at all, really. Like they will hold water for months. So I'm not worried about that, but let's take a look. I can already see some growth happening. So these smaller ones on the side are the variegated Monstera adansonii, and you can see that there are some growth points popping up, which is really exciting on almost all of them actually. And then these ones over in this section are my Florida Beauty, and we have quite a few growth points on these as well. Yeah, popping up on a lot of them. Very exciting. I honestly forget what ended up going on this side. I'm not sure if it was Obliqua or something else that I put in here after the fact. I'll have to look back on the footage. I'll put it on the screen. And then over here, these are mostly Monstera Obliqua. I don't see a ton of action going on yet here. I'm just gonna kind of like pick up a few and see if any of them have rooted so far. It looks like maybe a root is starting on this one. Oh, we have a root right there. You can see that white fuzzy root. Okay, that's good. So some of them are rooting. We don't really have a ton of growth points going on, but there's something happening, so that's good. And as the temperatures keep warming up for spring, I think we're only going to see these grow faster. But it's really promising, especially for the variegated ones that I put in here. I was really concerned and curious about how they were going to do. Um, and this one even looks like it might be variegated, which would just be amazing because that was the whole reason that I chopped up my Florida Beauty to try to bring that back the that ver to try to bring back that variegation. So I'm quite pleased with that. It's been, like I said, um, I think we're a couple of days away from the four week mark. Wet sticks do take a little bit of time, especially if you're not doing it right in the peak growing season. So I'm quite happy with those. I'm just going to go grab the, we had just a couple of water props going as well. Okay, so in this cup we have my variegated Monstera adansonii. And I actually checked on this a couple of weeks ago and it wasn't even in the water. Like it was just kind of hanging out weird and I was like, oh shoot, like that should have been in the water. It's gonna die now, it's not gonna do anything. Um, but I put it back in and I just let it be and then I checked on it yesterday, you guys, and oh my goodness, I was shocked by what I found. So we actually have a root starting. Look at that. Oh my goodness, I couldn't believe it. I thought for sure since it had been kind of like hanging out and not submerged for probably like a week or two, I thought for sure this wasn't going to make it. So I can't believe it's rooting. Like that is just so freaking cool. So I'm really, really happy about that. And then the other one that we put in here is my Monstera Obliqua, which I actually don't think is doing anything in water, but let's take a look. Yeah, we don't really have any action going on on this one, which is too bad, but I have so many cuttings of this that I'm sure, you know, some of them will root and grow. And this one might, this one might even still root. Um, it is adjusting from being outside of the cabinet, so, and you know, it doesn't look amazing, so it might just take a little bit more time. I'm gonna leave it in there. You never know. Obviously gonna leave this one in here too because it needs to root longer. Overall, I'm really pleased with this check-in and how everything's going. I don't really see a lot of rot or anything happening, so that is awesome. I'll pop back in probably in another couple weeks when I have another update. Okay, hey guys, it is now March 27th. It's been really nice and sunny and really feeling like spring here lately. So I'm hoping to see a lot more progress on these propagations soon, but I wanted to check in because I actually forgot to update you on one of them last time. And that's these guys right here. So just a sec, we actually have some growth happening. So I had to check in and show you guys, look at that. Oh my goodness. And I just have these sitting in front of my south facing window. Like I said, it's been nice and sunny lately and I can actually see active growth points on all of them. So if you look, there's growth points on all four of them. So I'm pretty confident that these are all gonna grow, which is so amazing. It's nice that they already had roots to kind of get them started. But yeah, I realized I missed those ones last time I updated, so I just wanted to show you that. And then I also thought I would check in on the rest while I'm here. So here's the variegated Adansonii cutting. I can actually probably pot this soon. Oh, whoops, that leaf is getting 
in the water, but look at the roots on this. They look so good. There's four juicy roots on there. And I am so happy to see it. Look at those. Oh, that's so satisfying. This cutting looks very white. I guess this must have been the top cutting. I don't even remember now. But yeah, it's definitely rooting. It's all like weirdly curled. Anyway, since it's so white, I don't have a lot of hope for this one, but you never know. And then there's also the obliqua cutting in here, which didn't, oh, I forgot I put philodendron brandy cuttings in there too. But there's also um, obliqua, monster obliqua cutting in here too, which didn't have roots before. And unfortunately, it still does not have any roots. The leaf is still hanging on, but yeah, no roots. That's okay, we have so many other cuttings. I added philodendron brantianum cuttings in here and they're both trying to give me new leaves while propagating in here, which is quite crazy. Let me go grab the wet sticks. I'm gonna keep this brief, we'll just take a look. I've got the obliqua one right here. It honestly doesn't look too different, so I'm just going to close it back up. Okay, oh my goodness, I'm glad we're checking on the rest. So I have the plastic container with our um, Florida Beauty and our Variegated Adansonii. And I can see leaves, you guys. We have some leaves that have popped up. <gasps> oh my gosh. <gasps> oh my gosh, there's so many. Okay, so the first thing I'm seeing that I'm immediately so happy about is this leaf right here if you can see it it has green on it it's variegated it has green and white and this is i believe the florida beauty does it even have roots no it just has a leaf but that's fine because sometimes wet sticks put out leaves first don't panic if that happens because they will put out roots after that but yeah wow it looks like i may have brought back the variegation on my florida beauty which would be freaking phenomenal um, and then we have an all white leaf over here, which, you know, is unfortunate, but not surprising. And then over here are the Adansonii cuttings and we have a lot of growth, mostly white. I can see that there's a white leaf there, a white leaf there. But on this one, let me see if I can grab it. This one actually looks like it might be giving us some green, which would be amazing. So this is pretty promising. I am so excited that leaves are starting to come up. Oh, that is just awesome. All right, well, that's the update for March 27th. I will talk to you guys when something else is happening. Okay, y'all, I have an exciting check-in today. Today is May 18th, and this update is actually regarding my box of Monstera Obliqua runners that I cut up. And as you can see, several of them have put out leaves and they're so cute. These little tiny baby obliquas. Oh, this one even has a second. Oh my gosh, they both do. They have second leaves on the way too. Oh, that is so cool. I'll try to give you a close up. Look at them, that's two of them. These are the um, ones that came up first. And as you can see, they're preparing to put out a second leaf. This one is just coming out down here. Kind of hard to show you but yeah that one's just coming out and then there's one that's about to unfurl up here which actually looks pretty big look at that oh my goodness obliqua is a plant that i actually think looks so cute in all stages like i love the way the little baby leaves look that's adorable i don't know when i'm gonna i'll probably still wait a little bit longer to take them out of here but so far I'm so happy with this and I used to have this like clamped close but now I'm just kind of setting it on there um, because I don't want you know now that they have leaves and the leaves are kind of pressing against the top I don't want them to be too suffocated so I'm just kind of doing it like that and I also see lots of roots happening on the other ones so I'm feeling like we are going to have like pretty good success with this honestly I feel like a lot of them are going to root up which is really nice. I'm gonna take a picture of this and post it in my Discord because I need to show people. I'll grab our other props to give an update on those as well. Okay, so our box of variegated props, I am mildly concerned about, I will say. And that's because as I showed, oh gosh, this is dripping. As I showed in, I'm gonna have to take the camera down just a sec. 
I can't hold it up without it dripping everywhere. So as I showed in one of the last updates, we have some leaves popping out on some of these, but unfortunately, like a lot of them just aren't rooting. It put that leaf out and it still hasn't rooted, which not great because it's been a while for it to not have a root. So it looks like that leaf is dying off. This one as well doesn't look great. Does this one have a root? No, or it looks like it did, but then it just like died off. I don't know. This one's rooted. I tried to tug it. This one, I don't know, but oh yeah, that one's rooted too, but it's all white. So that's really like not, not helping here. Um, Mikan's is doing great. I should take that out soon. I think I'm going to add some water in here today and I'm also going to uh, put some Super Thrive in that. So maybe that will give them a little boost. I feel like I put Super Thrive water in here when I first set this up, but I don't, I don't remember. So I'm going to do that and then put it back in its spot and just keep my little fingers crossed. The other one is this baby at Insonii that I potted up. It isn't doing anything so far, but it is alive. So that's good. I just watered it today, so it's all wet, but... It looks fine. And then the next one here still looks pretty much the same, I think, as the last time I updated. So it's a Monstera Obliqua Runners again in there that were already rooted. That one's still working on putting a leaf out, as you can see. So yeah, no leaves fully emerged yet, but hopefully soon. Okay, hello everybody. I have no idea how long it's been since I've updated this video, but we need to get cracking with it so that it can get wrapped up eventually because I feel like this video is going to be so long. So today is Monday, July 24th, and I'm going to be doing an update on all of the little babies. Um, my Monstera Obliqua babies and my variegated um, Floored Beauty and Adansonii babies. So let's just start with this one. It's not good. It's not a good update, you guys. I thought we were gonna have a happy ending to this video, but it does not appear to be going in that direction. So remember I had all of those leaves coming up? They were all on this side, and now they are completely gone. <laughs> so that's very fun. I don't know what happened, just in the move, they, they kind of all croaked on me. So, yeah, I think I am going to be variegated at Insonii list and Florida Beauty list as well. There is one uh, growth point that's coming up here, so I guess I'll see what happens with that one. But it kind of sucks because I really thought, like, you know, lots of them were growing and I thought that I was going to end up with um, at least being able to salvage a couple of them. All these plants that are growing over here are just philodendron mykins. Um, which I should probably take out soon too, but yeah, I mean, that sucks. This one that's putting out a leaf, first of all, it looks all white, and second of all, it looks like the root has is rotted, yeah. So, maybe these weren't getting enough light for a while, so they just all rotted? I don't know. I did notice that some were rotten, like a month ago when I took them out. There's more that are just like brown and rotten that I'm going to take out. But yeah, that's the sad update on the variegated plants. The ones that haven't rotted and that are still hanging on in here, I'm just going to be leaving and you never know. Maybe I'll get another leaf and new roots on them. So yeah, that's the update for that one. Kind of crap. And I really love variegated Adansonii. I, would, I really want to replace that one if I don't end up being able to save one. Um, Florida Beauty, I'm kind of like, eh, I don't really care that much. But the Adansonii, I just love Monstera Adansonii. I have my green one up there. And I would just love to have a variegated one. So yeah, I guess that's going to be back on my wish list. But let's move on to better things, um, which is the Monstera Obliqua Peru. I have actually been very successful in propagating all of the runners, so I'm gonna crack this open and show you. They have just been sprouting up like crazy in here. You can see there's several of them that are doing really well in there. And I actually already have removed a few and have been growing them. And I'm sorry I didn't film it, but I took this one out because I was getting it ready for a trade and then I forgot to send it in the package, so I still have it. 
but I took this one out and just transferred into moss and it's really, um, it's been in moss, but I transferred it to this separate container, like living outside of just living in regular room conditions in moss and it's doing really well. It has fresh roots. It's given me a new leaf. It has little baby fenestrations. Like, look at how cute that is. Monstera obliqua is one of my favorite plants when it's in its juvenile form. They just look so sweet. So yeah, this one's doing really well. And then I also took, um, they were just growing. I didn't have a chance to update this video and they were growing and just like against the lid in the container, which is why I rem I've removed some of them. But um, yeah, I removed these three. There's three separate plants in here and they're just potted in a chunky mix and they're doing really well also. These are currently living in my Ikea greenhouse cabinet. I just wanted them to get a little bit more established as they transitioned to being in like a potting mix and everything. So um, yeah, they're doing great, honestly. I'll probably separate the three of them eventually. Or maybe I won't, I don't know. I still don't know what I'm doing with all of these. Like if I'm, well, I was gonna trade one and then I forgot. Um, I don't know if I'll sell them, trade them, keep them. I don't know, but um, I did keep this cup to show you. I'm just gonna be getting rid of it because it's not a good update, but I kept it to show you. So there was these runners from the Obliqua or these cuttings or whatever that were rooted in this potting mix and they also just died. Like, yeah, one is like completely just a rotten stick and then the other two just all the growth died off. So, I'm just gonna be throwing those in the compost. It's fine though, because I have so many of them anyways. I'm gonna take out the ones that are ready to be potted and I'm gonna quickly do that. And then I'll show you what they look like and, um, and sign off of this video. Oh, and I also have to give you an update on the Monstera Obliqua that I just kept a cutting of, just living out in regular room humidity um, to see how it did. It's doing so well. This is it. It has three leaves and it actually has a fourth on the way as well. And um, I just recently put it on this moss pole and it's just, yeah, it's, it's really healthy. It's looking amazing. So this is like, I guess my main one right now. Look at that. Oh my goodness. It is so, so pretty. I don't think it's really rooted into the pole yet, but I'm sure it will. You can see the new leaf is starting to emerge from there. Right there, you can see it. Yeah, oh my goodness, it's just, it looks amazing. So I'm really happy about this one and I'm happy that I kept this because I remember I was debating not keeping it and just going with the wet sticks, but I'm glad I kept this one because I have a little bit more of a mature one too. Okay, I've taken out the cuttings that I'm gonna be potting up and there's seven of them. So I just kind of wanted to show you what the roots look like. Most of them have one long primary root um, and maybe some secondary roots on some of them, but mostly just a primary root. Yeah, they're just little babies and I'm just going to be putting them in these small um, little pots, plastic pots in my tree fern fiber mix. So hopefully they'll be happy in there. And I also added some Osmocodin. I haven't watered. I haven't watered them through yet, but they're all potted up. There's four in this one and three in this one. And I think I'm gonna pop them in my greenhouse cabinet just until they, you know, get a little bit stronger. Like the same thing I'm doing with this one. This one's a bit bigger though. Anyways, yeah, that's it. That's how the babies are doing. I now have, how many Monstero Obliquas do I have? One, two, three, four, five, five plus seven, 12. And then however many are going to still grow in the propagation bin. As they put out leaves, I'm just gonna remove them from here and pot them up. So yeah, that's that's what happened with the Monstera um, Obliqua propagation. So I guess I'm just going to wrap up this video here. If I have any other crazy updates on the Florida Beauty or Variegated Ad Insoniae, you will hear about them on my channel. But for now, I'm just gonna consider that as unsuccessful. Um, but the Obliqua was very successful, so I don't know. You win some, you'll lose some. Variegated plants can just be a bit of a struggle. All right, I hope that y'all like this video. Thank you so much for watching. Also, give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. 
Okay, I'll talk to you soon and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye. Try